All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening. How's everyone doing? Can everyone uh, hear me and see my screen? All right. Good, good, good. So it's been a very, very hectic, busy last few weeks uh, from Miami to Toronto to back to Montreal. Um, let's see here. Florida. Okay. 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 Good. Where's everyone from? I'm from Indonesia, Nairobi, Germany, Mexico, Brazil, Bahrain, Dubai, Canada, Morocco, Sweden, Morocco, Raleigh, North Carolina, San Francisco, Maldives, India, Morocco again. Okay, good, good. Poland. Good, good. So we got a lot of people in here today. Uh, I think we got like nine more seats uh, pending before the room gets locked. Um, Philippines. Good, good. So how many of you guys are new here for the first time? Like uh, you've never been to my webinars before. I love you, teacher. I love you too, Ahmed. <laughs> okay, we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow. Okay. We got like over 10 people here, seems like it. And then those who haven't spoken, probably them too. Okay, we got some more. All right, so a couple things in here. We we do things a little bit interactive in our, uh, in my webinars. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, my name is Naveen Prithiani. Um, I am the founder of Urban Forex and Forex Watchers and the senior trader at Forex Watchers. Uh, so... We have closed down Urban Forex and merged it with Forex Watchers. So for those of you who, who are diehard fans of Urban Forex, I'm sorry for that. We just had to bring it all together so we can focus our uh, attentions to one. So everything's now at Forex Watchers. We've in fact even opened up a nice uh, educational fast track course for you guys. Um, if you guys haven't seen that already. Uh, yeah, I was just looking at Tesla stock. So for those of you who remember my last webinar, I talked about this. Um, anyways, this is not for stocks. This is on Forex. Let me open up uh, da, 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 da. Forex Watchers. Yeah, I forgot my own website. Okay. So yeah, Forex Watchers, here it is. And if you just click on this button, start the course, it will begin all the video tutorials uh, so that we put out for free. So this used to be paid uh, on Udemy. You know, it's, it was one of the highest rated courses uh, with the most number of students and everything. So uh, it was a good experiment to try it out. Now we just made it available to free. We just wanted to check with the paid community a little bit to see if they would, uh, if this was a course that's worth having. So we opened it up. It's free. So make sure you take it. Make sure you go through the course. And if you really want to step up your game, we have the elite community which we are opening up today. We are opening up the elite community. We have a few seats we're gonna open up today. Uh, I think I believe they told me seven, more or less. So after this webinar, uh, you guys will receive emails regarding that. Um, it's only for a select few. Not everyone is gonna get that email. So based on your criteria and your history, um, we have analysts that track all that, that they check how much have you watched our course, um, how much do you participate? Do you come to our webinars? And those are the ones who get uh, additional coupons and stuff like that. So no, no age restriction to join. Um, obviously, we have a lot of fun inside. Some people do swear. So I'm guessing, what, 16 is the age limit for swearing? <laughs> I'm not sure what the age limit for that is, but um, no upper age limit. No upper age limit is there. Uh, in fact, I just went to meet one of our members in uh, Miami. Uh, this is one of our newer members from last month. Uh, so I went her to meet meet her in Miami at the Four Seasons. A very nice lady, um, and uh, took a road trip to Toronto with some Urban Forex dudes. Uh, that was quite fun. Um, wasn't able to stick around Toronto for very long, but. Uh, 
It's always good going to Toronto. A nice road trip. So we'll be in San Diego um, uh, next month around this time. We'll be in San Diego. So, okay. Hey, why is this a story about top of the age range? <laughs> uh, is there... Um, uh, your hair is turning gray already. Yeah, man, tell me about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old now. I'm getting old. So, lots of people, lots of feedbacks, lots of people to reply to. You should see my email inbox. It's, it's nuts. It's just... So, I guess the gray hair is for every day that I cannot respond to my emails. <laughs> Tamer, nice to see you too. I believe you're also a member, Tamer, and uh, uh, in our Forex Watchers uh, Elite community. Right? For two weeks? Okay. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Welcome. Welcome. Gray hair correlates with Market Whipsaw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Krista, no, it wasn't a road trip from Miami to Toronto. From Miami, I flew back to Montreal, and then uh, a friend said he's having a uh housewarming so had to drive up there okay so let's get started shall we let's get started um maxing i was hoping to catch up in toronto i'll make one more trip out there i'll make one more trip out there and then we can catch up in person um but for those of you who are gonna be in california i will be in san diego for like four or five days uh i think 21st to 25th of september yeah. All right. So let's get started now. Candlesticks. Candlesticks. We're gonna do everything a little bit interactive today. It's gonna be. We're gonna go from basics to advanced completely. We're gonna cover all of it. My audio will go in and out a bit because uh, this happens every webinar, and the audio should be fine now. I, I can see when the audio goes in and out. Uh, that will happen sometimes, but. Uh, uh, <laughs> You're the only one I stay up for, Naveen. Don't cheat on me. I won't cheat on you, buddy. So, um, I will come to Australia as well. So, yeah, candlesticks. So, candlesticks, uh, we're going to go from basics to advanced. We're going to cover some general topics. Now, for those of you who are watching this either live right now or those of you who are watching the recording, there, there's going to be a sensation of, okay, the webinar is an hour long, so let me fast forward to the important stuff. Here's the thing. I teach everything very, very differently, and the basics that I, the way I teach my basics might not be the way you've learned your basics. So it might be important to just at least briefly look look at it and to see if there's something I cover that you've never seen before. Yeah. Um, Sudipta, please give a YouTube link of this webinar so that I can watch it again. Yes, uh, the email will go out probably 24 hours from now uh, once the recording is uploaded. Okay. So, shall we begin? Let's get started. I think we spent 11 minutes uh, with introductions and saying hello to everyone. Let's get started. Okay, candlesticks. Let's open up this thing here. Okay, you guys see the whiteboard? And the room is now full. Okay, all right, so in a candlestick, always remember two things. A candlestick was made to represent the world inside, okay? It is not a pattern that is made to show you what's going to happen. It was simply designed to show you the world inside of it. Okay, there's a reason why you want to know the open, the high, the low, the close, blah, blah, blah. It is the world inside. Okay, let me let me show you. So it, it was made generally for a higher time frame, like let's say a daily chart, right? And if a daily chart shows you something like this. Let me do it like this. What does that tell you? If this was blue or green. Buyers push. Yeah, it's simple as that. Buyers push. But they give you some story of what happened in that candle. Okay, so it opened here. Okay, this is the open. 
it closed here but between this time period let's say this is the daily candle right it, so if it opened there it closed there on the daily candle it shows you in that day some at some point he reached down here and he got rejected really really badly okay and then he ended up going all the way to the top till this highest point then he came down a little bit more and he closed there okay so this shows you an entire universe of a if this is a daily candle it tells you what happened in the entire day in one candle at a glance Okay, now using this information, we can somewhat project tomorrow or somewhat project the next candle. Okay, now there's many ways to look at candlesticks. One is a collection of candles, which is the way I like to look at things. And two is simply looking at it in terms of one individual candle to judge the next candle what the next candle will be which i think is a little bit less uh meaningful okay because the, the markets don't just show up one candle and the next candle fly away and then the next candle fly away you know they they they, they hover around a lot so they, they go down like this then they hover around then they go up like this and then they blast down and then they hover around you know so they do all sorts of stuff they don't just do one candle and then blast. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, Nazifa, I don't know why you can't see the screen. Um, try re-entering the room, see if that helps. Okay, so let me remove this right here. Now, when I say look at multiple candles, I'm gonna start going into a little bit more intermediate. Now, everyone know a candlestick, how it works, open, high, low, close, everyone is aware of that? Yeah? Okay, good. Now, for those of you, who, if you do not know that, just look it up online, just the open, high, low, close, don't look at anything else, and you'll you'll know how a candlestick is, is, is designed. Now, to go into more detail, I, I suggest you focus on this webinar instead of the information that's out on the internet because it's really, really random. And trust me, <laughs> it's, I don't know where they get their education from. So here's the thing. Take a look at this very carefully. When you see a blue candle okay, or a green candle that looks like this, okay, it's in an, uh, it's in an uptrend, let's say. So this is a, a green bar or a blue bar another blue bar up here okay every uh, everyone can see this that it's a uh, uptrend uh, Yavra welcome if this is your first webinar welcome yeah now in this uptrend we have this now does this mean the market's gonna turn around what is that last candle yeah that word maybe and possibly good good so you guys can see that there is some sort of rejection coming in into the uptrend but it didn't turn it around now how does this candle look on a lower time frame just just imagine that if this was a daily chart and then i split this up into like a four hour chart what does it look like the opening price was where here so here's a candle going upwards Okay, then the candle goes up again, that high. Then the candle goes up again, maybe like that. Gets rejected at, at this height. Then the candle comes down in, in red. Sorry, I should make this in red. Okay, and then he comes down again. Oh, sorry, that's too much. Okay, and then you come down a little bit more and that's where he stops. Isn't that what it looks like? Here's the opening price. Here's the closing price. So this is the opening, how it looks on a lower time frame, and here's the closing part, how it looks on a lower time frame. Notice how it's not it's not disrespecting something like an SNR or anything. It's just like this. It looks like that. Okay? So this means the upward strength still has power. Yeah, I mean, 
Gordon, yes, there's more candles, but I'm just showing you how this would look on a smaller time frame. Right? So does everyone understand that? Okay, so it's important to know the universe below and above. To know when the candle looks like this, what does it mean below? So now you know the universe below, how it looks like. It can help you gauge what's trying to happen. Now let's flip it around and look at the universe above. Okay? So what's the universe above? Let's, let's do this. Okay, chart should be cleared. There we go. Uh, markets are going up. Okay, markets are going up. And then in an uptrend, suddenly you see this. Okay, what will this look like on a higher time frame? What, here's the opening, here's the closing. If I put that all into one candle, it's going to look like this. Opening, closing, and then that big upward movement that got rejected. And this is all red in here. Yeah, so always keep this in mind. This is very important to know the universe above and below. That's what a candlestick is made for, to look at stuff inside of things. Okay. All right. So now let's, let's, let's look at some logic. Let's look at some logic. Now, yes, um, uh, Raghunatham, order size is important. Now, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let me show you this. And you guys will answer this question yourselves, actually. Take a look. If, oh, why is it so black? One moment. Okay. If, if there's a candle like this, uh, it's, Okay, is that an exhaustion candle? One second, there's a truck outside again. Yeah, that's an exhaustion candle, right? It looks like if it was a downtrend, it's going up. So how many of you guys would say this is trying to turn the market around? What if the candle before this was like this? Would you say it's turning around now? Uh, Desiree D, very good. Okay, so now you guys have an understanding of an exhaustion candle. Everyone knows an exhaustion candle here. I think you guys have been, you know, using pro trading strategy and everything. So you guys know what an exhaustion candle is. It's made to turn the market around, but let's use a little bit of logic, okay? How can the market turn around if there is a massive downward flow and the turnaround candle is very small? Because if I draw this on a higher time frame into one candle, what will it look like? If I draw this as one candle, here's the opening price, here's the closing price. So open from here, close from here, and a tail that big. Does that look like the sell is over? No. So you guys start to get the idea now what it means to look in the universe above and below? Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff like this where you have to just take a moment and be like, I see a pattern which I was taught, but what does it mean? Is it valid? Is it not valid? And this has a lot to do with uh, understanding this information around it. Okay, so let's take a look. 
at some charts now. Okay, so we've done some basic on the drawing board. Let's take a look at some charts and then uh, we'll do some examples there. Da, 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 my screen. Okay, charts uh, visible. All right, good. Let's take a look at some stuff here. Now, I can actually take a screenshot. Okay. You see, do you see my red circle? Yeah, so everyone can see the chart. Okay. Take a look at this candlestick pattern here. We've got two side by side like this. Okay, uh, Sela, this is trading view. We've got tradingview.com right here by uh, Stan Bokoff. He's the founder of TradingView. Nice guy. Okay, a little hard to see color. Zoom in here. Okay. It's gonna. Here, I'll do this. I'll make it on my screen. Maybe it'll be easier. Uh, do you post ideas on Trading View? My my ID is Forex Watchers. Um, I don't post them, but maybe I will. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll start sharing some ideas there, or I'll have a staff members start sharing it okay this is the area we're talking about is this better to see for everyone yeah okay so this area is like a rejection now look at these two candles. okay focus very carefully look at this candle this green one and look at this first red one Now, how would we judge that when it's coming up in an uptrend? Can we judge that, that it's going to fall? Okay, now let's take it a step further. Okay, let's take it a step further. If you include the next candle, so you have this uptrend that begins from here. Now, does it matter how many candles I involve? Let's say I involve all the red candles until here. What would that look like on a higher time frame? It'll be a green candle or a... It'll open here, it'll close up here, and it's gonna look like that, right? Everyone agree? But it's green, this candle's green, it's not uh, red. Okay, that means the buyers are dying, but they're not dead. Here's why, because on a smaller time frame in the universe below, right here on this chart, you can clearly see he's at support equals resistance. On a higher time frame, people might say, oh my God, sell, 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 because they look at the exhaustion. But on a lower time frame, you're like, it's not a sell yet. I can see they're dying, but it's not a sell yet. This helps you with what we call timing. Timing is very critical in trading. You can have the right idea of selling, but if you sell here, and then things don't sell, but then it sells here, you're going to be like, I knew that but I didn't make money from it. So timing is very critical. Right, everyone agree? Okay, so getting the direction right is, is a piece of cake, but getting the timing right is, is, is the hard part. Cool? All right, shall we continue? All right, let's continue. 
Chris, uh, you make it sound so easy, but it's not so simple to get it right. Yeah, I, I, I get that a lot. <laughs> I get that a lot. Um, if you practice it quite a bit, it does get easier. Um, everything, you know, in the beginning is always hard. It's, it's like driving a car. I always say it like that. It's so difficult and sounds so dangerous, but with a little bit of practice, it becomes second nature. Uh, Yavar Naveen, where are you from? I, I'm from all over the place. Uh, parents are Indian, grew up in, uh, born in Dubai, grew up in South Korea, lived in the States, Cyprus, Bolivia, oh, you name it. So, uh, Chris Sayers, uh, lower time frame might show a backdoor movement. Yes, yes. Uh, John A, so we're looking uh, for a more full retracement or more just close attention to support resistance or both. 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 Uh, Naveen is an Indian name. Yes, yes, I believe so. Uh, Chris, right after the last green uh, daily candlestick. Okay, so if we take a look at this area here where he goes up again and then he collapses completely. Now, what does that look like? On the higher time frame. Remember on the higher time frame, first you saw... Let me change the color so you guys can know where I'm pointing now. First, let, I'll make it... Hmm, I'll make it red. First you saw this candle, right? Now the second one, when he came, came up and down like that... So the candle just next to it will look like this. Here's the open and the close. Open and close is almost the same price, and then you have a doji, like that. Not a doji, but you have a candle that looks just like that, just next to this dying one. Okay, you guys see? You guys see that? Okay, this shows you a sign of first one. First candle said slow down. Next candle said no movement. Can't even get higher than the first candle. Okay, next candle, once again, he tries, he opens here, he closes much lower, and he goes as high as him again. It'll be something like this. You see this? No higher high sequence at all times. No body is going higher high either. So this is a turnaround, yeah, uh, like Chris says, it's a, it's a cell setup in progress. So you're, one moment, let the truck pass so I can hear myself speak. <laughs> okay, so the first indication is where everyone sells. All the traders who have some knowledge will sell at the first sign, okay? And they'll get caught up into that, they'll get stopped out, they'll re-enter, they'll get stopped out, or they'll make some money, they'll exit it. By the time the real move happens, they're not even watching it. They're somewhere else, they're looking for some better opportunity, they're, they've given up on this. Okay, this is the normal cycle that happens. But in reality is, you have this little phase of, it shows something, uh, it shows something interesting, everyone jumps on it, but then, yeah. Patience is the key, Chris. That's correct. But it takes a little bit of time to set up. So if you're looking at your chart, and if within 30 minutes you feel there's a trade, I need to take it. It's a bad trade. Look at the charts, and if you have not spent at least 30 minutes to an hour analyzing it, you cannot take that trade. If you take that trade in less than that time frame, in less than 30 minutes or less than one hour of research, you're doing impulse trading. It literally takes that long. Okay? So if you turn on your computer, you come home from work, you turn on your computer, and you're trading within 10 minutes, that trade won't work. Okay? Or it may work, but it's not good for your account balance overall. Okay, so do we check lower time frames for entries? Uh, for yes, yes, uh, I generally do. I generally do. You don't have to. Uh, that's only if you want tighter stop losses. But uh, you can do it on the same time frame. Like, like let's say you enter here somewhere, where my red circle is, and you keep your stops up there. You can do that. But if you go to a lower time frame, you can end up entering here somewhere, and you put your stop loss up there. So it depends what you're looking for. 
Okay, this is usually, if you do stuff like this, this is the money maker, but this is hard to do. What I mean by money maker is you're risking, you know, let's say one R, which is, let's say $100, for example, and your ability to mint money is on this entire daily time frame. So you're, you're, you're pulling out this trade from the four hour or the one hour. So for a risk of $100, you can make up to $500, $600 here. This even looks like a six R potential or something. If my eyes are correct, this should be four ah, R. Okay, way off. R stands for risk to reward. Yeah. Okay. How do you do, how do you guys say risk to reward? What? Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say something to you guys. When when you guys do risk to reward with me, um, it's always you're doing. Are you doing a two is to one, three is to one, four is to one, right? It's always is to one. So why do we need to keep saying is to one? We just say R and we, we understand it's to one. It's okay. Does that make sense? It's just to make it shorter. Uh, Krista, yeah, it's an automatic uh, plotter. There's one for sales and one for buys, yeah. Okay. All right. So far, so good. Everyone understanding uh, the logics of watching the universe above and below. Here's a tricky one. What about this? What about that one? Doesn't that look like the market went up? went sideways and then made an exhaustion. Doesn't it look like that? So why isn't it selling? Larger time frame pushing up, Chris. That's correct. It's this. It's this. In a situation like this, the reason why I say look at more information is because you need time to analyze stuff like this. Otherwise, when we see stuff like this, we're like, oh, it's a sell. It's obviously a sell. We're just going to end up hitting the sell, right? Because it's bigger than even the candles on our left side. So it's like, yeah, it must be a sell. Right? Is, is uh, audio okay for everyone? Oh, okay. Volume as in trading volume. Okay. I thought, I, I thought you guys meant my volume. Okay. Um, yeah. So it looks like it's, it's, uh, the cell setting up, but here's the thing, the higher time frame always, always, always will win. These guys are the ones with the most money. You don't see a professional banker scalping his brains out. He's moving large amounts of money. It takes time. Okay? It takes time to move large amounts of money. So, when we see this on a higher time frame, let's take a, let's just jump up to the weekly and see what that circle looks like on the weekly. If I can find it. Let me move this. There we go. Ah. Look at that. We're in a range. Okay. Uh, Tamir, Levine, you gotta go. Too bad. Uh, no worries, buddy. No worries. Uh, I'll, I'll be in uh, Forex Watchers. Uh, you're a member there, so you'll see me quite a bit there. Have a good night, buddy. Take care. Alright, so here's the consolidation. Oh, let me get the line up. Here's the consolidation, and in this consolidation, you're seeing an exhaustion candle that says sell. Now, do exhaustion candles work in consolidations or do they work in trends? In trends, exactly. You remember this? Remember when we were looking at this one? 
the f remember we said the first one everyone tries to sell this is the higher time frame now look how it looks does that look like it's taking over the buyers now if we know that it, this is a range and we know okay rejection one rejection two we can start preparing for sales no higher highs and everything we're getting multiple rejections the top of the range is holding now it becomes a higher chance of winning okay and you take it down to here no, not to here we don't know it's gonna go down to here we take it down to here Make sense? All right, let's take a look at some more examples. And uh, this time you guys are gonna walk me through it. It's quiz time. Uh, will you take profit outside the range? Chris, no, inside the range. You take profit here. Right there. Sorry, I, I meant X marks the spot, not X means it's wrong. Yep. All right, next chart. And then I'm going to open up, let's say, the four hour charts. I'm going to take you guys to, let's say, I don't know, New Zealand, US dollar. Okay. We're on New Zealand, US dollar right now. Shall we do some live analysis using the candlesticks? Okay. Now, if I look at only this, only those three candles, wouldn't that look like a sell? Now, focus very carefully on what I'm about to say. Someone on the five minute chart actually only sees that that it's a sell you guys agree they only see that their entire screen is filled up with these three candle design which means something something drop so they see a downtrend and a sell coming but we as a bird's eye view on the four hour chart we're like oh good luck to whoever's selling to this uh, resistance and support they're going to get cremated. Right? So you guys can see the variation between a smaller term time frame trader and higher time frame. If you want to be a small term, small time frame trader, you have to know your higher time frame as well. You can't just trade the smaller time frame. Which means to trade a smaller time frame, you need to do more work, more research. That's why scalping is not so easy. It's actually hard. Make sense? So let's take this circle that I drew. I'm going to bring it down to the 15 minutes. And you tell me what you see on your screen. This is the 15 minutes, not even the five minutes, the 15 minutes. Everyone's going to look at this as a sell. Right? So more and more people will join the sell when in reality is anyone joining sells lately is going to be in trouble. Now look at this one. This is a candlestick pattern here. What about these last two candles? That's a railroad track, right? You guys know a railroad track? Okay, it doesn't matter the terminology. Forget the word railroad track. Focus on the opening and the closing. It opened here on the red candle and it's closing right now the green candle right there. So open and close is almost the same price and then a big tail on the bottom. Exhaustion candle, pin bar, reversal icon. But after a drop this big, the candle is reversing that much. Remember, don't forget the higher universe and lower universe. Don't forget that. So just because this is an exhaustion doesn't mean it's going to turn around this massive monster. 
Because this massive monster on the four hours, as we saw, let me clean it, is still red, and that sign is nothing but a slowdown. It's just a little tail on the bottom. Make sense? Never stand in front of a in front of a speeding train. Yeah, yeah. So now you know when you see exhaustion candles what it actually means. Exhaustion candle here. Everyone agree? Sorry, that one. Uh, Yaver, no. The answer is not. It's still a buy. It's still a sell, actually. It's still a sell. It'll get lower, but it's trying to. It's showing you. It's getting rejected every time, but. Most people will try to buy on the first move, thinking that it's a porticles resistance. Let me just buy it. All we know, it's the seller's market right now. Let them die. Let them take their turn. Let them finish their turn. Then it's our turn. We come in for the buy. Okay? If you want to be a seller, then you wait for the buyers to finish, and then you sell. You don't sell after the sell has begun, because then you're too late to the game right so here's here's the thing i'm going to show you something really interesting take a look at this okay do you guys see this uptrend here from here to here you guys see this uptrend like this piece right here this uptrend okay one thing i'm going to i'm going to point out to you guys that's very very critical and very important is one one major thing is most people trade too late. And what I mean by trade too late, they get into massive, massive amounts of trouble, which makes the 95-5 principle work very well. It's not that people have bad luck or people have the wrong education. They just are not using their education to the best of their knowledge. They're entering way too late, okay? So take a look at this. In this uptrend, most people will say, show me it's a sell and I will sell it. So they will use stuff like, let it break support equals resistance. So they will sell here very late. They will say, let it break the uptrend line. They will sell here very late. But the move started up here. You see how that works? So as it goes away further and further, red bars and stronger it goes, more people join the cells. 80% of the world is going to join the cell here and look what happens when they all join the cell. It is a cell design, but what happens when everyone joins the cell at that point? Market turns and that's how the 95-5 principle works. It's not the strategy, it's just most people join the market when the market says I'm going down. You can't participate, you need to anticipate. That's the difference. Okay, uh, Fayaz, how do we enter? We need to see the buyers dying. As the buyers die, here, I'll show you. As the buyers are dying up here with all these candlestick designs that you can see of rejection, 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 and you have previous resistance, this increases your chance to say, I'd rather hit the sell in this area, or here, or here. All of these rejections up here at the, at the resistance is better. Okay, but entering here, it's, it's death. Because where are you gonna put your stop loss? Up here and take profits? Well, if you enter here, stop loss up there, your take profit's gonna be what, two is to one at least? Down here. You're gonna end up either closing, break even, or a loss. And if that's the case, your account balance will never grow in this style. It cannot grow. So there's a difference between trading correctly and a good decision and a bad decision. You guys might all be trading correctly, but might be entering too late. That's the thing. And we go very deep into this at Forex Watchers because timing is very critical. You enter too early, stop loss. You enter too late, stop loss. The timing is critical. Okay, the last three green candles are tiny, so we know a sell will happen soon. Yeah, it's a slowdown. It's a slowdown. We don't know it's a sell is going to happen soon because there's also support equals resistance here. But this is minor support versus this major resistance. Like, look at this massive chunk that it got rejected from. So, 
right? So use this knowledge to your advantage, put everything together, uh, and you know, learn to train from that. So candlesticks, one day if you have a chance, just stop your trading, just look at your candles and be like, huh, what does it mean? What is it on a higher time frame? What is it on a lower time frame? If you if you can do it like this, I train my my students like this. I have them put two screens like this side by side, and I have them say, okay, one time frame is going to be the sixty, and one time frame is going to be the four hours or fifteen. So you can this way you get to see what one image looks like on a lower time frame. Okay, and you can do that with three charts and have one and a higher time frame, so you can see the complete differences between up and low until it becomes second nature where it's in your mind you know what's happening okay then you'll become like einstein and have gray hair like him <laughs> all right so again i wanted to let you guys know so forex watchers the rooms are open for seven people seven people uh it's going to be first come first serve once they are in the rooms will be locked until next month no one else can get in okay so first come first serve and uh uh Deepak, i believe the prices are on the site uh we only accept uh members on our elite community only uh, uh one time a month so the rooms will be open membership is open today until the end of the month or uh until the first seven people join then it's then it's closed i believe it's seven i have to check the numbers i think uh armo was telling me seven uh martin naveen if i'm trading the one minute uh or five minute what higher time frame should i watch um i would say you'd have to watch the 60 and the four hours yeah 60 and four hours i'd say Four hours just for a glance, 60 for more more involvement. Okay. Uh, Joe, uh, the memberships are like around 1500 for three months. Uh, or I think we have, a, I think there, there's a discount going up for longer term joiners, people who join for six months or one year. I believe there's a discount of uh, 15 or 20%, maybe 25%, something like that going out today. So. Yeah, if you're if you're swing trading one hour and four hour or also daily, four hours good sign for seeing swing. It filters out the noise. Yeah, yeah, I, I prefer the four hours and the daily. You know, if if I take you guys to the members area, let me show you members area. You can see all of our members here. You know, here's a four hour buy. Here's a four hour buy. Uh, oh, Joe, is that you? Uh, in uh, in our members area. Or maybe just the same name. Uh, then there's Tamer. You saw him earlier uh, on the list where he went to bed, I believe. Uh, Tamer is also a member here. Um, the website's on Forex Watchers here. There's It's called Elite Community on ForexWatchers.com. And in the Elite Community, uh, there'll be an email out to those uh, who can join. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's hard to get in. So... First seven people, we'll, we'll get them in. Uh, what about six hour, eight hour, 12 hour time frames? Uh, I mean in CT. Nishi, what do you mean by CT? You, you can trade those hours. In C Trader, yeah, you can. You can use those. Remember, from one hour to four hours is how much? Okay, how many candles is difference between one hour and four hours? Four candles. How many candle difference is f from four hours to daily? Six. So you can see there's n there's no consistency. It's not the same pattern. That's why people use different time frames like eight hours or twelve hours or six hour charts. If you want to keep it consistent, where when you see a lower time frame, it must look exactly the same as when you look at a higher time frame. Okay, and if you do daily to weekly, how many difference in candles? Uh, not seven. Remember, we don't trade on weekends. I wish, I wish. But <laughs> five. Yeah, five. So 
this is the difference. If you want to keep it consistent, keep everything five, keep everything four, keep everything three. Remember, there are people trading 12 hours. There are people trading six hours. So everyone has their own time frame. So it's your opinion versus the next. There is no such thing as my one hour time frame or Naveen's daily time frame is the best thing to trade. No, there's no such thing. You pick your time frame and it's your opinion versus the next guy's opinion. And everybody is right. Make sense? So, all right, guys, I think that's it for today. That's all the time we have. I look for seeing some of you guys at the Forex Watchers uh, Elite Community. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys in a few weeks for the next webinar. What are we doing the next webinar on? Yes, this was recorded. What do you guys want for the next topic? Combination of topics? Uh, yeah, we can, we can mix up some topics. Uh, we, we did Divergence last time, Joe. So Divergence is already on our Forex Watchers YouTube channel. Uh, the elite community is basically this, Yaver, what I showed you guys inside. This is the members area where there's training. There's, there's over 2,000 hours of videos. There's two conference rooms like this every single day. Uh, one at London, one at US. Um, and you know, you have access to come meet us in person and stuff like that. Uh, you know, there's Bangkok, London, Miami, Toronto, and so stuff like that. Um, uh, trend trading, please. How you know when, how much it will retrace and how much it will extend by. Okay. Target and exit strategy. <laughs> entry and exit strategy. Okay. But entry and exit strategy can only be based on, a, on, a particular type of way of trading. So if you're range trading, entry and exit is going to be different than trend trading or channel trading. Right? So it's all going to be different that way. Uh, if we trade with candlesticks only, or is it possible to need an indicator? Uh, Sela, I, I only use candlesticks. I don't use indicators. Proper use of leverage. Uh, John A, I can answer that right now. 50 to 1 or lower. It'll keep you safe. Most people cannot handle a higher leverage and it should not be used. Um, I myself use lower than 50 to 1. So, uh, Channel trading, pip milking. Uh, do you prefer Hennekin Ashi traditional? I prefer traditional to tool. Um, I, I never experimented with Hennekin Ashi, so that's the reason why I'm saying traditional. Maybe Hennekin Ashi could be nicer. Just haven't used them. Exits are too personal, no need to cover. Okay, okay, support and resistance with the strategy. Okay, okay, maybe that, support resistance with the strategy. How about that? Yeah, okay, so we'll do support resistance, but with the strategy, with the entry exit style kind of thing. Okay, so if you combine what your knowledge today of candlesticks and you put them together with the support resistance entry strategy going into... Uh, Next week, you'll have a full trading system. Okay, it's not the it's not the best thing in my opinion, but you'll have a full trading system. Okay, is it possible to make money on the one minute or five minute? What do you think, uh, Martin? I used to trade uh, one minute and five minutes. In fact, fifteen seconds also on um, on futures, on forex, I wouldn't be so happy to do it like that. Okay, but uh, on futures, yes. Can do that on you know um, the DAX or the uh, uh, FTSE or S and P and stuff like that. Yeah, support and resistance with strategies. Do you have a video on how to identify ranging markets? Uh, no, or maybe maybe if you check Urban Forex, maybe it's there somewhere. Yeah, maybe if you check if it's there somewhere. Uh, Martin Poland, even with zero pips spread, there's no such thing as zero pip spread. If there is a zero pip spread your broker is showing you, he will extract it some other way. Okay, so there's no such thing as zero pips. Okay, uh, I struggle managing swing trades that are uh, open during big news. Um, yes, never participate in big news. Trade around it. That's my opinion, of course. I, I know many people trade it. But with the Forex market and the way the world is crazier and crazier every day, do 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 or uh, trade around it. How about gold trade? Is it dangerous than Forex? Celia, I think gold is just as good as Forex. Even silver, copper, precious metals, uh, they're pretty good. But higher time frame, 
they're more volatile, they're more crazier, but it's okay. It's okay. Once you get the hang of Forex, I think you can ha handle uh, most things. If I see an opportunity to trade in one hour time frame, what is the best time frame to enter my position? Uh, 15 or 5 ding. Um, or one hour with the bigger stop loss, 15, 5 if you want a tighter stop loss. <laughs> Only trade the FOMC. Uh, do you use trend lines with support resistance? Yeah, I do. I do. I actually have a YouTube video on trend lines as well. For those of you who want to watch that, I think uh, my channel is youtube.forexwatchers. YouTube.com slash forexwatchers, I think. That's the channel. Uh, trend line, trend lines. Okay, so all the webinars are here. Trading course is here. Blah, blah, blah. Educational videos is here. There should be... How to use trend lines. There we go. 10 minutes long should be a good and easy way to watch it. Uh, the next webinar should be in two weeks. Um, but the webinar after that is going to be difficult because I'm going to be in San Diego. So um, I'm going to, I will be on Forex Watchers, but I might not be on the public webinars. Uh, the second webinar. The next one will be active, but not the, not the one after. All right. So. How many of you guys am I seeing in the elite community? Any of you guys interested in joining the elite community? If yes, I look forward to seeing you guys. I look forward to seeing you guys. I think there was a lot, a lot of people on the waiting list. So I really look forward to seeing you guys as training begins as soon as possible. So, okay guys, thank you so much for attending. Um, it's been an hour. And uh, if there's any questions, email me, naveen at forexwatchers.com. I'm slow at replying, but I always do reply. So thank you so much. Uh, until next time, guys. Cheers. Bye for now.